In this video, we're gonna talk about taking off a disc brake caliper in order to change brake pads. We'll talk about taking those pads off, importance of torque specs, as well as some of the lubrications that we can use to make sure that the pads and the caliper all operate as they should. To begin removing this caliper, I'm gonna remove the guide pin bolts first. I've already broke these loose with a ratchet. These should not be very highly torqued. When I take these out, you'll notice the whole caliper shifted down. I wanna be careful that once those are out, this caliper could slip and fall off. The weight of this caliper should never be supported by my rubber brake hose. So once I get it loose like this, and I go to move it, I'm gonna to have to use some kind of component or hook in order to support this. So I've got here an aluminum hook, put that through one of my guide pin spots, and I can hang it up on the strut, and now it's supported, and I can move it safely out of the way. With the caliper removed, now I can see my brake pads within the bracket here. These brake pads should come right out. By design, these brake pads are made to move and slide within these guides of the bracket. If they're stuck, that's a sign that I probably need to do some work. These come out nice and easy, and that's a good thing. Something I wanna pay attention to is whether I've got any kind of corrosion or buildup on the ends of my pad here where it goes into the bracket. With our brake pads out, let's talk about the measurements we need to take. I'm interested in what the depth of that lining surface is. That's gonna help me know kind of where I'm at in terms of the life of this pad and whether or not it needs to be replaced. A good tool to use to measure brake lining thickness is a dial caliper tool like this. They come in analog forms such as this one. You can buy them as a digital one as well. A lot of options that exist. Most of these will measure three different types of measurements. I can do an internal dimension with this end here, an external dimension down here, as well as a depth measurement here at the end. That's the one that we're gonna to use to look at our brake lining. To make that measurement, I'm gonna take my pad and look for where the backing plate is and I can make contact with the brake lining. I wanna make sure that it represents the total thickness of the lining or I wanna look at the smallest spot. I get lined up with that, push down until I make contact and see there, I've made contact with the lining surface. Once I've done that, I can analyze my result. We checked first to make sure that we are at zero and now we can see what's happening. So to interpret my reading, I've got to look at two places. I look first at the body of the caliper here. I can see that I've passed the two. I've not quite gotten to the three. These represent tenths of an inch. So I'm at 0.2 inches here. Then I look toward my dial and I see I'm about 86 thousandths. So the total reading for this particular brake pad lining is 0 0.286 inches or 286 thousandths. We could then record that data and compare it to the specification. The other thing I wanna look for on my brake pad inspection is to make sure that these pads are wearing evenly. I wanna look for taper in two directions. So I wanna look at my brake pad in terms of its wear from this side to that side. Some taper in that direction is normal because of the rotation of the rotor. And so fore versus aft in that direction might wear slightly different. The other one I wanna look for is the taper this direction. This helps me understand whether these pads are being applied equally across the whole surface of the rotor. Any issues that I find in taper from side to side in either direction could tell me about issues with my caliper slides or the ability for everything to move freely. Back at the car, I wanna look at a couple things with my brake caliper bracket. If I'm doing a pad change, typically I'll get some of these small consumable items as part of my brake pad set. If I don't have new ones of these and I'm going to reuse them, I wanna take special care to make sure they're clean and make sure I lubricate them here. We'll talk about that in a minute. One of the better ways to clean these components is a small wire brush. When they're out, I wanna make sure that the portion of the bracket here is also clean. This area is often prone to buildup and some corrosion as water gets trapped there. I also wanna take special care to look at my guide pin bolts. So my guide pins slide out they're typically different top versus bottom in a lot of applications. I wanna make sure that these are clean and well lubricated. If they have a dust boot, I wanna make sure that dust boot's in good shape as well. When I go to put my pads back in, I've got some options about how to lubricate all the components. Here are two products that we could use. This one by CRC is made specifically for brake and calipers. They label it as a grease. 
The other one that I can use that's pretty universal is a sill glide or silicone lubricant like this one that's made for a variety of applications. When I go to reinstall these pads, I wanna lubricate some points of contact. The points of contact at the end of each pad right here are designed to slide within the caliper bracket. I wanna make sure I lubricate these so that this can move freely. To do that, I'm just gonna take a little bit of my sill glide and apply it to all three ends of that pad. I wanna be mindful that I'm getting good coverage, but I don't want to overdo it and risk getting this onto the rotor surface. This is also a great time to lubricate any guide pins. I can utilize the same components on that. Keeping these moving freely helps with pad wear to keep it even for a floating style caliper like this. With everything lubricated and my pads reinstalled, I'm gonna bring back my caliper and get everything mounted up. It's important to make sure that we torque all brake components. We've looked up the specification and this one is 28 foot-pounds. That's it for our video. Just a quick and easy brake pad change. You get familiar with some of the components, get familiar with the lubricated areas, as well as putting everything back properly with a final torque.